Thank you. I would like to start this conversation with three questions. And if you know the answer, please raise your hand. Do you remember what is the phone number of your best friend without looking at the phone? Wow, no, nice, all right. What about solving this equation without looking at the phone or a calculator? Who can do it? One, two, three. Ah, OK, OK, you got one. Very good. A harder one. Can anyone read what I wrote in there? My handwriting? Yeah, oh, good. Two, wow, that's amazing. Well, the three things that these have in common is that these are abilities that have been overtaken by technology. Today, we don't need to remember any phone number because it's at the fingertips of our phone. We don't need to deal with the solutions of the equations because they come embedded with any piece of technology that we own or any software we touch. And hopefully, not everybody needs to remember or to figure out what we're writing because we are using our keyboards most of the time, and it's just easy to send our notes to everybody. So they don't have to remember, like, what, what did she write in there? The truth is that technology has been going crazy in the past years, totally exponential. And since the democratization of artificial intelligence, we're wondering, are we going to have a job? Yes, AI today is doing many of the tasks. But unless your next move in career is to have a call center job, which I hope you don't, that job is going to be overtaken by technology, especially by AI. However, if you're studying finance, law, business, marketing, well, be aware because artificial intelligence is getting better and better in analyzing the data that you as a new entrant job for sure are going to do. And this is not only for entry-level jobs. Let me tell you a story. When you get in your 50s, hopefully with all the experience that you're going to get, people like CEOs or entrepreneurs will call and ask you to join to their board. And what that job means is that they're going to give you a package of information for the six months that they had. You're going to analyze it, and based on your great experience, they're going to give them advice. Well, I heard from many other entrepreneurs that they're already giving the same information to their GPT models. They're asking the machine to act as a board member. And you know what? The output they receive is most of the time 95% accurate. Very similar to what a board member, a human one, will give them an advice. So who knows? Maybe in the future, even board members are going to be in AI. I certainly hope not. But indeed, we are giving a lot of work to do to the AI. We are asking them to be graphic designers, content writers, planners, anything. We are asking them to do all the business plan, marketing plans, essays, homework, why not? Everything. And when we do that, we are even asking them to create ideas that we didn't have. We're asking the machine to create the stuff that we didn't know how to. But what about if AI is having better ideas than us? And what is worst? What about if one day AI will have all of the ideas? Think for a second. Power is off. No calculators. No phones. No nothing. What do you do? Why are you going to remember how to do anything? How are we going to add value to what we were doing? We've been outsourcing most of our ideas to AI. What are we going to do? We will need to relearn how to do most of the things that we've been outsourcing. And the thing is that we don't need a global catastrophe to let us know that we need to hold from those very human skills. 
You know, in the type of job that I do, I work in telecommunications. I help companies to uh, be better by the use of technology like blockchain and AI. And I also had the opportunity to uh, run a podcast about the future where I ask leaders to let me know what do they think that is going to happen in 5, 10, and 25 years. So to the question about what are the skills that you need in your team members from the next 5, and 10, 25 years, all of them come back with a very similar answer. What we need the leaders of the future to have is creativity. We need them to do problem solving and decision making. So when you are leaving most of these tasks to an AI, what type of ideas are we going to have in the future? What type of ideas are you going to bring to those companies to generate value for them? Is AI also going to take our creativity human skill, like has taken my ability to calculate with a calculator? How are we going to remember to be creative? But I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't use AI, because that is as bad as that professor trying to convince you to not use a calculator. No. What I'm here to tell you is that you need to use AI to be better. AI already is increasing our productivity by 40%. So the future is not only about how do we use AI. The future is how do we work together with AI. The future is about how AI enhances our human creativity. So what I want to tell you today is to give you three takeaways. Especially three takeaways that will enhance that human creativity. The first one is ask questions. And ask questions like you were a kid. You know, when we were kids, we were asking questions like every minute. We did ask 300 questions a day. Ask why for everything. But remember that the quality in the answers is also depending on the quality on the questions. And how do you get good questions? Active listening. The better you listen, the better that you will get. It is shown in varied research that active listening actually increases up our creativity response by 40%. My second tweet for you is play and explore. Not that I need to convince you to do any gaming online anymore. Actually, gaming is very good because it helps you to the problem-solving abilities. But I will dare you to go outside and play. Go outside, play something. When was the very last time that you actually did something new outside playing? It actually helps for your, man, for your mind because what it does is that it helps to reconnect those situations where you are helping your mind to calm and to reduce the stress, where stress is actually one of the inhibitors of creativity. And the last one I want to tell you is about think in ink. Take a pen, write something, start a journal. And if you don't know how to start a journal, write a sentence tonight. Something like, I met this crazy lady on TED Talk, that was, whatever. It doesn't matter. It could be a sentence today, a paragraph tomorrow, a page later. Did you know that actually if you take notes by hand, you will increase the possibility to get better grades in your exams? So write something. Think in ink. I have to confess, I am worried. I'm very worried that AI will take away our human creativity if we don't do something. But we are in that precise moment with the responsibility that we can create where AI is in parallel with our human creativity, where we think in the innovations that we can add to enhance our human creativity, our human skills. Let's build that mindset where we are always putting in priority our solution and skills and decision-making, and please don't try to 
outfold that into the machine. And let's connect. Because if you connect with the world, with the people, with the nature, that is the most human thing you can do. So my invitation to you is, don't go crazy and go under the hype of the new technology. But if you do, always try to bring it to enhance your human creativity, your human skills. Embrace and empower that human intelligence. So just we can keep ourselves more humans and less machines. Thank you.